I used to get McDonald's coffee almost every morning on my way to work. However, something recently happened to me that might be the end of me being able to ever enjoy a cup of coffee again. Like any normal day, I went through the drive through of my local McDonald's and got my usual order before going to the office. But on that day, something about that cup of coffee was just off. It was still drinkable, but it was more bitter than usual and had a bit of a rancidness to it. I figured the coffee was expired and the bad taste could be covered up by some cream or sugar, and so I went back to the drive-thru and grabbed a few of them. I really thought everything would be fine after that, but to my disappointment, the coffee still didn't taste right. Each sip was like choking down piss or sewage water. It was that bad. I started to feel like I was becoming one of those people on the internet that got messed up after having the grimace shake. But all I was having was a cup of coffee. At first, I was just disgusted by the taste. But once I had enough of that stuff in me, my whole body started to reject what I drank. Suddenly, it became obvious that I had no choice but to pull over and throw on the hazard lights to prepare for what was about to happen to me. As soon as I stopped, I frantically crawled over the passenger seat and pushed the door open. A moment later, as my head hung out of the car, the floodgates opened. I unleashed the most unholy and powerful stream of vomit I have ever witnessed come out of somebody's mouth. My whole body wrung itself out with each convulsion, again and again, each time forcing me to retaste that awful coffee. I felt like I was moments away from drowning in my own uncontrollable projectile vomit. The sheer force of it made it splash everywhere and coat the inside of my car, as well as my face and all my clothes. Unfortunately, as I gasped for air and tried to get a hold of myself, I slipped out of my car and fell right into the gigantic pile of it. The overwhelming disgust I felt at that moment made me start growing up all over again. I kept thinking I didn't have anything left in me, but then out of nowhere, there was more. It wasn't long before someone pulled over and asked if I needed any help, but I couldn't speak for several minutes. I just kept hurling. At some point, they offered me some water which I used to rinse out my mouth, only for my stomach to push out another surge of bile. Before I knew it, I had become some sort of spectacle for a small group of people on the side of the road. Of course, most of them kept themselves at a safe distance, but some guy kept asking me if I needed an ambulance. But I didn't need an ambulance. I needed the police. I whipped my car around and sped all the way back to the McDonald's. The whole time I kept looking at the coffee in my cup holder and thinking that it must have been laced with poison. When I got back to the McDonald's, I cut in front of the line and demanded an explanation from the staff. What the hell did you serve me? It's just coffee, sir. Don't play dumb with me. I know you put something in there. Tell me. I don't know what you're talking about. Please calm down. I didn't want to play stupid with him all day, so I took the lid off the cup and looked inside. About half of it was gone, but floating on the surface was the most unmistakable sight of the most disturbing, horrifying thing I have ever seen. It was a dead, rotting mouse stuck to the bottom of the cup. The sight of it sent me into a third bout of uncontrollable vomiting, which took me a long time to recover from. I was in disbelief, and yet it made perfect sense. If that McDonald's had a rodent infestation, the stupid managers probably stuffed the place full of rat poison and figured it would solve the problem, until one of the poisoned mice crawled inside of a cup and croaked in there, just for some drowsy minimum wage worker to be completely oblivious as they poured the coffee right over it. The police were called because of the scene I caused. I ended up choosing to file a report against the McDonald's location, and I've been fighting with them ever since. They must have paid off some health inspectors, because they released a statement claiming there was no evidence of any pest problem whatsoever, and that what happened to me was an isolated incident they are not responsible for. I know I'll get them one day, because I have concrete photo evidence to prove their negligence. I missed work for a week because of how sick I was, and my car has never smelled the same. Since then, I'm still waiting to be compensated. I don't even know if I'll ever be able to enjoy coffee again. This story was inspired by a horrifying incident that happened to a Fredericton man who actually found a dead mouse inside his McDonald's coffee cup. Here's an image of it below. The man stated that when he picked up a cup of coffee from a local McDonald's restaurant on his way to work, he was contently sipping his coffee when he found a small mouse in the bottom of the cup. 
when brought to the attention of McDonald's. A pest control company allegedly found no evidence of any rodent issues in the building and has mentioned that they are continuing to investigate the isolated incident. Hungry. Can someone please give me something to eat? Anyone? Go eat your wife. Get a job, loser. <sighs> oh, God, that looks so good. I wish I had more to eat than just the homeless lady on 54th Street. Hey, can I have some of that? Oh, come on, man. I just want something to eat. Yeah, screw you. <sighs> I gotta make this work. Excuse me, sir. Could you help me out? Miss, could you spare some change? Please, sir. Can I have some more? Screw off. Spare change? Hey, can I have your leftovers? Pretty please? Uh, can anyone help a hobo out? Please, I haven't eaten anything since I divorced my wife! Hey! Shut up and get a job, you lazy bum! What the hell is your problem? Nobody wants to hear your jingling pennies in your stupid cup! Everybody just loves to kick somebody while they're down. You know, I like to be the person kicking for a change one of these days. Wouldn't that be nice? <sighs> How long was I out for? Wow, look at that! Oh yeah, that sounds real nice. How much we got? One, two, three, four. Four dollars and ones and all of this. Which has got to be at least a couple bucks. I can definitely buy a Big Mac now. Yes! <sighs> Hey, what's going on? Let me in! Get out of here! I'm not letting you in! Why? Because! This isn't a homeless shelter! Well, screw you then! <laughs> oh crap, where am I? I gotta stop getting spooked like that, it's gonna get me into trouble. Wait a second. Yes, I'm safe! Let's hope folks on this side of town aren't as uptight as those other jerks. Come on, please be open. I know it's not that late. What the? Somebody is still in here, but what are the hours to this place? Well, that's not helpful. I guess if the door is unlocked, I can come on in. Hello? Is anyone here? Are you open? Hello? I'm starving! I need something to eat! Please! <gasps> Good evening, sir. How may I help you? Um, hi. I'd like to order a Big Mac, please. And fries. And a drink. Actually, just give me as much as I can get for however much this is. <laughs> Very well, then. Follow me. I want to show you the best deal I have. Oh, thank you, sir. You just made my night. I've run into nothing but jerks all day. I'll put an end to that, my friend. Just come back here with me. Oh, uh, you mean behind the counter? I haven't been behind a counter of a restaurant since I had a job. And how long has that been, my friend? <sighs> since I got addicted to, you know... No, 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 no! Where are they? Uh, are you out of patties? <sighs> what does it look like? Yes, I'm out of patties! I'm Ronald freaking McDonald and I don't have a single Big Mac! What is wrong with me? I'm loving it! I'm loving it! I'm loving it! I'm loving it! Hey, watch out! You're burning your hands! Oh, this? This is nothing. Nothing at all. Ah, doesn't it smell delicious? What the hell is wrong with you? Stay back! Come on now. Just a little whiff. <laughs> uh, okay. Yes, that's it. <laughs> Get in close. Nice and close. <sighs> okay, that's pretty good. Exactly! Ah! <laughs> I'm gonna cook you alive! No, please, please let me go! Yeah! <laughs> 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 Behind me, 
stands the scene of a series of crimes that will undoubtedly go down as the darkest moments in the history of our community. A man, whose name authorities have not yet released, has been arrested under multiple charges of kidnapping, murder, and cannibalism. It's believed that thousands of hamburger patties may have been contaminated or even completely comprised of human tissue. If you or someone you know has ever eaten at this establishment and fear you may have been affected, call the number on your screen now. This story was inspired by an old conspiracy that went viral back in the day regarding a Facebook post of someone saying that a McDonald's restaurant was using human meat in their hamburgers. The conspiracy has since been labeled as a hoax used to cause public outrage and create publicity. But there are still a large number of people who believe that there's more to the meat produce than just beef, despite the conspiracy being shot down. A few years ago, I lived in a small bungalow type house with one other guy in West Virginia. The place was kind of cramped for two people, but we made it work since neither of us had much money. We both worked at the same McDonald's back then, so we didn't make a lot. I had just recently moved out of my parents' place so that I could be closer to work. I worked the night shift full time, and my parents lived pretty far away from the McDonald's. I hated driving so far all of the time and I wanted less of a commute. My roommate happened to work the same shift as me too, so we were able to drive to work together most nights. It wasn't the best job, but I wasn't able to find anything else. Over the course of my stay there, mine and my roommate's diet pretty much only consisted of McDonald's. We'd get Big Macs, fries, nuggets, basically anything off of the menu and eat it for dinner. We got to bring free food home after every shift so we'd always gorge on it before we went to sleep. I felt disgusting only eating McDonald's all of the time, but that's what I had to do. I didn't really have time to go shopping and the McDonald's was free. Apart from having to eat the food all of the time, it wasn't such a bad experience working there. That is, until later on when something disturbing started happening. Every time I went into work, I would find a bunch of druggies and junkies loitering around inside and outside the McDonald's. They would roll inside in gangs. Dozens of them would be there every night. The McDonald's became like a trap house. They would all buy cheap cups of coffee just to have a reason to stay. It became a big problem because they would make other customers very uncomfortable. I felt bad for them though, especially this one guy named Albert. He always seemed worse off than the rest of them in there. I would give him free fries sometimes when the managers weren't looking. I didn't want to kick any of them out. It was the middle of winter and cold as shit outside, which made it hard to do so without feeling guilt tripped about it. I had a bit of a soft spot for them because my brother had become homeless due to an addiction. It was a bad situation though. More and more of them kept coming every week. My roommate and the other employees on the shift started complaining to the boss about it. They said that they didn't feel safe working with all the junkies there. My boss said that we couldn't do much if they kept buying coffee. As long as they were paying customers, they had a right to be in the store. And at that time, the loitering laws weren't as strict. So every night, my roommate and I would go work at a McDonald's full of addicts and then go home to pick out on our free food. We started to work so much that we barely had time to do anything else. The house became a total pigsty. McDonald's fries lay everywhere. Bags of half-eaten food were piled in the kitchen. It was a dump. I started to get tired of living in the mess. It was really getting to be disgusting. Flies were all over the place and the smell was awful. I complained to my roommate about it and told him that we had to clean up, but he just brushed me off. I kept asking him about it, but he told me that it was all my mess and refused to help. This went on for weeks. I tried to clean up what I could, but I never had the energy after working all night. There was no way for me to keep up with all the garbage from the McDonald's food. The stench became overwhelming and I got really depressed from it all. Finally, I decided that I couldn't take it anymore. I had to quit McDonald's which of course meant that I couldn't afford to live on my own anymore. So I planned to move back out to my parents place. 
Before I fully moved out, I cleaned up all of the trash and food that was everywhere. I didn't feel right leaving my roommate to deal with all of it, even though he didn't seem to care that much. When I finished cleaning everything, I noticed something strange. The house was still filled with a disgusting stench. It was like I hadn't even cleaned it. I went around the house trying to find where that smell could be coming from. Eventually, I realized that it was coming from the attic. My roommate and I never went into the attic so I didn't know what could be up there, but I checked anyway. When I opened the door, I almost threw up from the stench that hit me. It was absolutely disgusting. It smelled like piss and shit and rotting food. After looking around further, we had found a bunch of McDonald's fries and other garbage laying on top of some blankets, followed by a large hole in the wall. It looked like someone had been living up there. That's when we speculated that Albert, the homeless man from McDonald's that I had been giving free fries to, had been living up there for months. All this time, he would sneak down when my roommate and I left for work and head over to the McDonald's. There, he would get his free fries from me and then head back to the attic again. I was traumatized by the thought that someone had been living above us for god knows how long. That was why the stench was always so bad. I haven't eaten at a McDonald's since. Even the smell of the food makes me sick. All I know is that Albert was a sick man who was severely ill in the head. This story was inspired by a real-life fan-submitted story revolving around a time when the viewer worked at McDonald's. The viewer claims that he had discovered fries when cleaning out his attic, and has had no other explanation for it other than the same homeless man that he had been giving free food to had been living up there for god knows how long. The viewer claims that the landlord of the house has since patched up the hole, and has even installed cameras since the disturbing revelation. 